Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at what we call selective breeding. And another way of saying this is artificial selection. We've looked at natural selection in a previous video, but this one is about artificial selection, or in other words, selective breeding. Now, why do we use selective breeding? Well, it's to produce animals or plants that have particular characteristics that we want. So in our example here, we have a wild pig. And this actually is not the kind of pig you see on a farm. The ones you see on a farm look a bit more like this. And this is what we might call our farm pig or our domesticated pig. And the features, as you can see, are very different. It's a bit fatter. And the whole point of the farm pig is to produce meat. So via selective breeding, we can have characteristics in our farm pig that we desire or that we want and remove characteristics that we don't want. We can also use the example of a plant, and this is a type of crop plant that's used for food. This is an example of wheat, and wheat is very important because we use it to make flour, and flour is used to make bread, which is a very important food source for people. Now, this particular individual plant there doesn't produce very much flour at all, but the one on the right-hand side produces a lot more. It's a much bigger, stronger plant with much more wheat on it. So this is done by also a process of selective breeding. So we go from this plant here to this one over here, and that means we're going to get much more wheat, much more flour, and much more bread from the same amount of land, simply because we've got characteristics in the wheat that are very useful, i.e. a bigger, stronger plant. Okay, so this is not the only reason we do selective breeding. There's a whole bunch of reasons, but these are two key ones. There are four other reasons that we're going to look at, which you should know and remember, and those are as follows. So we have, the first one is producing crops that are disease resistant, disease resistant. So imagine the wheat plant is resistant to disease, that would be very useful. We have animals which produce more meat or milk, so you can think of cows, sheep, uh, pigs we've already talked about. We've got domestic dogs with a gentle nature which can be used as pets and we can produce plants that, that have large or unusual flowers. So these are four examples of how and why we use selective breeding. The next question is then how is it done? So we've talked about why we do it but now we're going to look at how we do it. So we've got an example here of chickens and we have the we have desired characteristics in those chickens and we're going to talk about egg production but the first step in selective breeding is choosing parents with the desired characteristics. So here we have two parent chickens with the characteristics that we want and we breed them together. So those two are bred together and we produce offspring. So the example we're using is egg production. So we can imagine this chicken over here produces say four eggs a week. And this is the female. And this is bred with a male. And we look at the offspring and you might find variation. You will find variation. Perhaps the first chicken over here in the offspring produces one egg per week. Maybe the second one produces say two, just for argument's sake. And then the third one we have producing our four eggs. So what we then do uh, next is we would take this chicken that produces the four eggs and breed it again for another generation. So then we would look at the next set of offspring in the next generation. And then we ha would have more of those chickens that produce the four eggs. So for example, that one there, the first one and the third one both produce four. And so we have more chickens in the offspring that produce our four eggs, but we will go another step again and eventually after several generations we're going to end up with chickens that all produce four eggs maybe four or three eggs so we'll have a whole generation of chickens that produce a lot more eggs and therefore we have selectively bred chickens that produce a lot of eggs and that's obviously useful for food production and this is done with plants as well as animals but we can make a list of steps of how this is done so we've got first parents with desired characteristics are bred together second step is the offspring with desired characteristic characteristics are bred together again and then we would repeat this for several generations until we have a generation of animals that have all the desired characteristics that we want but remember also removal of characteristics that we don't want as well okay so there's our generation there along the bottom so these are our steps we do have to remember though we have to be very careful because this can cause problems all of this selective breeding can lead to what we call inbreeding. And this could be where we have a genetic disorder or a genetic disease that is inherited across a whole range of animals. And it can also leave animals prone to disease as well. So these are two important 
uh, problems or important features that we have to be careful of because it can cause problems with the animals. Okay, so there we have it, selected breeding and how we use it to create or produce domestic animals that will produce meat and milk and food, etc.